Hi, my name is Manuel Ipani. I am Dean and Professor at Citro Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Citro Channel. Today, we continue our discussion on properties of the material. If you remember from the last time, we ended the discussion describing the load deflection and how that graph can explain the property of that wire that you were using. However, load deflection has certain limitation. For example, using load deflection graphs, we cannot compare different materials. Uh, let me walk you through that. Uh, assume we have the same wire, 016 stainless steel, and we want to compare that one with the O2O stainless steel, so that is same material and di just different thickness, different diameters. And assume we cut them with the same length, attach them to the wall, and we apply a load at the end of the wire, and we measure the amount of the deflection that we get, and we want to draw the load deflection graph for these wires. One thinner, one thicker. When we draw a load deflection graph, would we get one graph or we would get two graph? Well, you're right, we get two graph. The thicker wire demonstrate a little bit different graph than the thinner wire. It is more upright because in response to the same load, the amount of the deflection in the thicker wire is less. Let's do the second experiment. In this experiment, we are using, uh, again, one wire, for example, O16 stainless steel, and in one condition, we keep the length shorter, and in another condition, we keep the length longer. Now, we connect these two wires to the wall, we apply the load, we start to collect data to make our load deflection graph. Would we get one graph or two graph? Again, you guess right. We get two graph. The wire that is longer demonstrates more deflection under the load compared to the wire that is shorter. Therefore, the wire that is shorter, the graph seems a little bit more upright, more rigid, more stiff in compared with the wire that is longer and deflects more. Well, these graphs provide significant information about how the wire behaved under the load but we cannot conclude how the stainless steel will behave compared with the beta titanium or nickel titanium. Why? Because different thickness and different length can affect the property of the graph. So how you can compare materials with the different geometry? Is there any way that we can take the geometry out of our equation and just be able to compare the materials? To do that, Let's do an experiment, and this time we using same wire with the different diameter but same length, and same diameter but different length. Uh, so let's pick up a stainless steel and make a load deflection graph for this stainless steel wire. You would expect that the longer but thinner wire produce more deflection compared with the longer but thicker wire. And shorter, thicker wire produce much less deflection compared with the other two. So if I draw a low deflection graph, I'm expecting three different graphs. Now, let's do something else with our data. Let's, in y-axis, where we had the load, divide the load based on the cross-section of the wire. And let's divide the amount of the deflections that the wire demonstrates, or elongation that the wire demonstrates, depends on what type of load you're applying, to the original length of the wire that we use. That would be delta L divided by L. If we do that, something magical happens. All three graphs become one. It seems that geometry is not part of the equation anymore. This new graph that you made is called a stress-strain graph. So when you're dividing force based on the cross-section of the wire, you are measuring the amount of the force 
based on the unit of the cross section. When you're dividing a magnitude of the elongation based on original length, you are measuring the amount of elongation per unit of the length of the material. Force divided by cross section that is called a stress or pressure, the unit of it, the unit of the force is Newton, the unit of the cross section in square millimeter, so the unit would be Newton divided by a square millimeter. The strain, that is elongation divided by original length, the unit of elongation is millimeter, the unit of the original length is millimeter, so it's unit less. So as you can see, the stress strain graph allows us without considering the geometry to compare the different materials. Let's look at one clinical, significant, important clinical application of this data. Let's compare the stainless steel beta titanium and nickel titanium behavior to see if I have the same diameter, same length of the nitide beta titanium or stainless steel, and I deflect all three materials same amount half a millimeter because I'm moving the wire up to engage in the bracket and the wire gets half a millimeter deflection from original position. How much would be the force of that bracket? The graph tells you the stainless steel applies much more force than beta titanium than nickel titanium. The graphs also provide some sort of a general idea about the proportion the stainless steel produce almost twice more the amount of the force compared with the beta titanium and four times more compared with the nickel titanium. Let's have examples. Assume a stainless steel makes 100 centinewton force, beta titanium will produce 50 centinewton force, nickel titanium will produce 25 centinewton force. So now we can get some sort of a, a idea when we are working in the clinic, how much force we expecting if we keep the geometry the same, but the material different. Next time, we continue to discuss the property of materials and their clinical applications. I hope you find this uh, session of CITOR channel useful for your clinical practice. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button.